Hi there, Henry from Nonland Virgin, Porsche People in Uxbridge. Welcome to another video. Um, I'm stood with a strange man next to an old car, so pretty much a typical Wednesday, really. Um, who is the strange man? The, the car you can probably recognise is a 3.2 Carrera Cub Sport, more of that later. But hello, Mike Wilds. Hello, Henry. Uh nice to see you after so long it is so i know who you are you know who you are i do um not everyone watching this will know who you are but you are quite an interesting person so tell us a potted history of mike wilds who's mike wilds well mike wilds was a a boy who grew up in west london in chiswick uh, with a passion for motor cars I wanted to be a racing driver and I used to go to a garage called the Checkered Flag in Chiswick and look at all the beautiful sports cars and racing cars in the window and vowed I would try and become a racing driver and since 1965 when I had my first car, um, 57 years later I'm still trying to be a racing driver. So yeah, exactly. What are you going to do when you grow up? I always uh, absolutely. So you you have done a little bit of racing over the years, haven't you? I have. Uh, I was lucky enough. I started off with a little DRW 1172 Formula car, and um, eventually sold it. Um, as you know, motor racing is quite expensive. I had to sell it to pay off my debts, and so I then went around um, trying to scrounge drives in people's cars, and luckily that worked. And I managed to eventually get in Formula 3 and then into Formula 5000. Did a few Grand Prix, uh, one Grand Prix for Ensign and a couple of Grand Prix for BRM in America, Argentina and Brazil. And then I concentrated on sports cars. I really enjoyed Le Mans 24 hour races. Because when you say you did a few Grand Prix and you talked about Formula 5000, I mean, you were a Formula 1 racing driver for a while. I was for a little while. It, yeah. it was the achievement of my ambition. Yeah. Um, Sadly, I couldn't drive for the right teams to actually see if I would have made a career as a Formula One driver. I'd love to have driven for Brabham or McLaren at the time or Lotus, uh, but I didn't get the opportunity. And um, a long story very short, uh, I fell out with BRM after complaining about the reliability of the, uh, the car, uh, which then sent me down the, the route of sports racing cars sports prototypes at Le Mans yeah. and it was a way of earning a, a, a living. Um, I had a wife and two children and a mortgage um, and sports car racing uh, s just f I slotted in quite nicely. So I, we, we, uh, which sports car, which teams have you driven for at Le Mans and, and, and so on? I started with a Porsche 935. Um, which is a fairly seminal car in their lineup. It's a fairly well known car. Yes. Um, it was a private team. Uh, I then drive a, a Lola at Le Mans, then I drove four years for a Curia Crossing Group C2 and finished off in 1988 uh, driving a Works Nissan okay. um, at the 24 hour, which was always my favourite race. It yeah. throws everything at you as a racing driver. I mean, 24 hour race. So, in when I used to race a little bit, um, our paths crossed. And I mean, I've always seen you as if, if you do. Uh, if you're a kind of gentleman racer, a lot of the, the formula will require you to have a, a pro driver. So you'd have a pro driver and a gentleman driver. And it's always really difficult um, because most pro drivers, they they kind of want to, I don't want to say make a name for themselves, but it's a bit of an ego. Yeah, I've got to be the fastest. But, and almost, you know, without fault, every single one would go out and they'd come back having an accident. So it's someone else's fault. You know, oh yeah, guy pulled it. Whereas I've always seen you as a really good, quick, solid driver, but also a really safe pair of hands. It's very kind of you. I, I enjoyed prototype racing, endurance racing, because I enjoy the team aspect. Yeah. I enjoy sorting a car with another driver, be it an owner or another professional driver, uh, to achieve a result. Yeah. And there's a lot of self-discipline involved we decide what lap times we're going to do. The ego really has to go on the yeah. back boiler. You do a job that you're being paid to do, 
and you do it in the safest way possible. I have a particular style of driving racing cars which I now try and teach people, yeah. I try and pass on that on. Um, and it's very satisfying to drive a car nicely, look after it, and get to the end of a 24 yes. hour race, six hour race, whatever. I love that whole team aspect of it. Yeah. Whereas my single seater career was quite insular. Yeah. Um, yes, it's great to work with the team manager and so on, but you're there in the car on your own to achieve a result. Um, my passion for Porsche, it was great to do my first Le Mans in 1981 in a Porsche because in 1970 I was at the Targa Florio and my good friend Joe Siffert, who was a Porsche works driver at the time, I was working for Firestone Racing Division um, on uh, sorting the technical side of race tyres for the teams and so on. Uh, he gave me a ride, he had a Porsche 911. Yeah. And he gave me a ride around the Targa, and uh, it was amazing, yeah. absolutely amazing. And that day I vowed I would own a 911, and this was the, the first 911 I ever bought. So your so what, when was it you, you first had that ride? What, what year was that? 1970. Okay, so given that this is a 1987, 1988 car, obviously it took you a while to achieve that ownership. Yeah, because I, I didn't manage to buy one of these in 1988. Uh, I bought it in 2000, so I've had it 22 years. And it's wonderful because it was the achievement of an ambition, a burning ambition I had from 1970 to 2000. Yeah. Uh, an awful long time. So this car means the world to me. Yeah. Um, and uh, they are probably the best GT car in the world. Yeah. Now a lot of people don't like Porsche 911s yeah, yeah. because Sadly, they don't drive them properly in the first place. I, th I, th I always think there's two two reasons. Firstly, because to drive a 911, as we both know, it, it, it's a slightly different technique to driving a more conventional car. Sure. And also, I think there's a, particularly in the UK, we have a love of the underdog. And, and Porsche are such a good, strong car, there's a danger that, you know, oh yeah, we know Porsche are going to pr produce a good car. So they're almost hating it for that reason <laughs> so they almost can't win really yes so yeah. why a 3.2 club swap we were talking earlier and you were specifically wanting a 3.2 carrera club sport yes i i i tried long and hard uh, to buy a 3.2 uh, club sport if i'm honest i wanted a 2.7 rs yeah and it was always a little bit out of my budget range. Um, I just couldn't uh, couldn't stretch to one of those. So the next car in line of a lightweight was the 3.2 uh, Club Sport from 1988. I bought a Porsche magazine and one comment in this magazine just struck me. It said, buy now or regret it. Yeah. And I thought, I have to find one of these cars yeah. because the report was glowing on yeah. this car and I couldn't understand why um, they weren't more popular at the time. And then I found out, I phoned everybody on the register that owned them, nobody would sell me one. Yeah. Uh, and so not because you're not a nice guy, <laughs> because they like the car too yeah, much. They just so, love yeah, the car yeah, too yeah. much. Um, I asked a friend of mine, Chris Phillips, who... Uh, was the previous owner of this car to sell it to me and he said no uh, and I basically gave up I thought well I'm not going to be able to ever afford a, a lightweight 911. 12 months later um, Chris phoned me and said that he decided to sell the car and I bought it instantly on the phone yeah um, I knew Chris was fastidious about his cars I didn't need to look at it to know that it would be spot on yeah um, and that was in um, the early stages of 2000, and um, I've owned it ever since. Yeah. And loved it ever since. Yeah. So, I mean, you, it's interesting you talk about the, the fact that people kind of almost weren't seeing the value, because we've also 
got a, a car in common. I know you've had a 964 RS. I've currently got a 964 RS, which we're actually restoring at the moment. And, you know, when we both, both bought them, they were another car that people just, almost you couldn't give them away. They, they were great for yeah. doing track days. And, yeah. and of course, sort of times have caught up and people have suddenly realized how great the, the 964 RS or, or cars like this are. So, I mean, what is it specifically about this car? You, I mean, so I, when I see you, I think what a handsome man, obviously, is the first thing I think. But, you know, I, I, it's, it's Mike Wilde's racing driver. We've, we've, we've done some racing together. But I also see you as synonymous with the Carrera Club Sport because, you know, I don't know anyone else that's owned one for as long as you have. You've, you've driven it, you've used it, and you're someone who's kind of a bit, you know, you've been exposed some, to some phenomenal cars over the years and, and some phenomenal Porsches, either giving tuition in them or driving them or... So what is it about the, this specific car, this model, which you say, do you know, that's the essence of, of, of what makes it so good? I've driven, luckily, a lot of Porsches over the years. Um, the Club Sport just gives you that bit extra. It looks like a, a 3.2 SC, but it's a world apart when you drive it. It drives like a little racing car on the road. Yeah. It's, it was the first 911 that was fitted with the G50 short shift close shift gearbox, which is a gem. And drive. also, that yes, because the gears are a bit shorter in this yes. car than the standard yes. uh, Carrera, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Um, so the whole driving experience is totally different from a standard 3.2 Carrera. I, th I think Porsche have this innate ability to, if, if you look specific, if we said, okay, what's different on this to a standard car, well, that, 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 and that. But the car is more than the sum total of its parts. Absolutely. And, and it, right across their range, I, I, I find myself saying it so many times that in theory, you'd think, well, they've only changed that and that and that. But, the, the the net result is such a transformation isn't it it is it's even down to the all the the little details only having one sun visor for the driver because well you don't need a passenger in this car this is yeah. for you to drive maybe drive it to a little gt race race it and drive it home yeah um it doesn't have a rear windscreen wiper. why would i want a rear windscreen wiper um the engine being blueprinted yeah. now blueprinting is that does that increase anything yes it does immensely production mass produced production engines are built to huge tolerances and so that crankshaft will be okay because it's within this huge tolerance these engines in the cs were built to the yeah. letter as to what they should be so therefore my car comes alive at four and a half thousand rpm it comes alive it loves it just changes it's a little bit like having a um a different cam suddenly yeah. in the car and it it enjoys to rev it has a higher red line than a normal um cs uh, sorry a normal um 3.2 sc would have because it's got hollow valves and it, everything is balanced nicely. Yeah. Probably doesn't give too much more horsepower than uh, a standard engine. It is more, but that coupled with probably a hundred weight or more lighter body. Um, I'll just I'll just translate for the <laughs> younger people. So this hundred weight you talk about, Mike. <laughs> Sorry, is, yes. Is that, that some, How many kilos is yeah. that? I don't know. <laughs> God, I can, it's one hundred twelve pounds or I'm something. Old school, yeah. Anyway, yes. Sorry. so yeah, it's a bit lighter. Um, and um, the the handling the engine the gearbox you put all this together this is the best 911 i've ever driven yeah i didn't drive one before i bought it but my god was i glad i did buy one i was going to say you obviously weren't too disappointed because no, you've kept it for not at all. 22 years um, and i think you'll find now that 99% uh, of people who own them um, won't part with them. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I think it, it, it's I, there's. We, we did a video on a nine nine six fortieth anniversary, and, and that's kind of the same thing really. In that the the differences that are are made, they're quite subtle. It's not trying to be a like an RS or something like that. But you just come out of it thinking this is. I've just driven the perfect 996 and, and I think these are the same it's just it is it's the perfect 3.2 Carrera yes. you imagine when they designed it they said right this is how we want it to be and this is the model this is that the, they've, they've put it down to a fine point yeah. and said if you sit in the driver's seat in this car we're giving you the ultimate 3.2 Carrera in fact I would almost say the 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 ultimate sort of historic, I, 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 I see this as the last of the classic 911s. Yeah. So I, I yeah. see these G-Series cars, um, when you go to the 964, it's a totally different yes. platform. Yep. And so to me, I kind of link these back to 1963. Yes. Um, and, and so it's almost like saying, well, this is Porsche's attempt at saying, this is our kind of last hurrah and our yeah. perfect classic Absolutely. 911. It's a driver's car. Yeah. Um, if you love driving, and especially if you love driving Porsches, I don't think there's a better car. Certainly of this era, there is no better car. So when you think they only made 53 of these, I cannot understand why they only made 53 right-hand yeah. drive. I, I, uh, I'm, I, I have this, this kind of battle myself at the moment with a lot of these cars you know, in terms of <coughs> sort of limiting the numbers of them. Um, I think sometimes it's done, if I'm being cynical, to kind of boost value. And I don't know with these, I don't know whether they genuinely thought, well, will people buy them? Will, you know, we'll only do a few and, and who knows? But as you say, it was 53 right-hand drive cars, wasn't it? Yeah. So given that some have been exported, some will have met a sad demise yes. and, and, you know, how many are still out there? I, I don't know, but it's not a big number. No, no, it's not. And uh, I think there was only a couple of hundred left-hand drives. So if you think of it with regard to 2.7 RSs, they made over a thousand. Yeah. Uh, it is one of the rarest 911s yes. that you will come across. I think the other thing which is nice about this is that it's not a car that's so hardcore that's going to track day car or you can literally go to the pub in this. Yeah. And it's a it's an everyday usable you know it's 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 a week nice summer's weekend, um, as I do, <laughs> as you do exactly. Um, not that of course you'd ever go to the pub and, and uh, well, you know no well for my orange juice uh, yeah for yeah. your orange juice and yes, yes. and the, the broccoli that you yeah, order there steamed broccoli. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think the fact that you can drive it and it gives you that pleasure not at 130 150 miles an hour but at 40, 50, 60 miles an hour, it's, it's giving you pleasure and enjoyment to drive yeah, at normal road speed. It comes basically down to one word. For me, it's character. Yeah. The car has character. And when you look at it, you know, it's a, it's a classic. You, know, you would look at this and say, oh, that's Porsche 911. Yes. Even if you know nothing about cars, you'll know the Mini, you'll know the Beetle, and this is a Porsche 911. You know, it, it, it's, the, it's... I have a... I have a, a a desire every time I clean it and I do try and look after it and I clean it regularly I have to then go and fill it with fuel and I then have to go and drive it yeah and it's really nice sometimes because I'll be filling it with fuel the car looks lovely because I've just polished it people will come from their cars and come over and say I don't know much about Porsches but that is beautiful yeah and that's why I love Porsches. I can't go to the till to pay for my fuel without turning around and looking at yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, and, and I, but it's strange. I always say, I may have said it in one of the videos before, when you see Porsches, they're in the car park. Yeah. And when you see like, maybe something like a Lamborghini, it's always parked up in the area that says, don't park here. And, you know, to say, oh, look at me, everyone. I don't think as Porsche owners, we, we buy them and have them for people to say, look at me, it, it's the object. It's either the driving of it from the inside out, Absolutely. or, and I've done it. I remember, you know, my first ever 911 was a white 3.2 Carrera, an 84, 85 car. And I remember getting the old autoclim out and polishing it and making it look lovely and just sitting having a cup of tea, looking at it, yep. thinking, wow. And I didn't care if no one else saw it. But as you say, it's a conversation piece when you're 
at the petrol station or whatever. Yes. It, it, it sort of, yeah. People love them. Yeah. Um, I've never wanted to own a Lamborghini or um, a Ferrari or, because if I felt I drive down the high street, everybody looks yeah. at Yeah. People sometimes look at it, but but they it but they're quite. They're, I know they've got this kind of yuppie image, but they're actually quite a conservative car yes, yeah. Porsche to me. Yeah. You know, it's 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 all quite subtle stuff. It's yeah. not. It's it, there is a spoiler on the back, but it's there for a reason. And um, and as a driver of a nine three five, you'll know exactly why they need oh, to. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, but but it is. It's it's they're quite conservative. I yes, think. Yeah. Um, and also, it's nice that you're driving it, knowing that kind of if something goes wrong, it, all the parts are available, yes. it's mendable, it, it's not one of those cars that, you know, suddenly it stops running and someone's, oh, blimey, this is going to be 30 grand to get it going again. It's really well proven technology. I think I, I'm a huge believer in preventative maintenance. So therefore, I don't wait till something goes wrong and then get it fixed. Uh, I try and keep on top of the car and touch wood in the 20 years, 22, I've owned years. It, 22 years I've owned it, touch wood, I, it's yeah. never ever let me down. And this is Steve Wood from Auto Farm. Hello. Hello. Hello Henry, so good to see you. So you are, um, well the big cheese at Auto Farm aren't you? It probably doesn't say that on your business card. No, it, it doesn't say, say big cheese. It's uh, I, I think it's MD or managing director, along with my business partner Mikey, Michael Wasty. So our paths crossed quite a while ago, 2008, something like yeah. So I was racing. Yes. Mike was racing. Yes. And you were racing. Yeah, we um, we done a, a bit of brick car together, didn't yeah, we? I think yeah. some. Uh, Bill Taylor? Yes, Porsche, uh, yeah. yeah, I didn't do Bill Taylor, I did some yeah. Brickcar 24s and some longer championship yeah, races. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and I then stopped racing and you've obviously gone away and you've got a proper job. I did, yeah. No, I, I was obviously in the body shop trade for most of my life as a coach builder uh, and then crossed paths with Auto Farm, uh, got to know Josh and Mikey. Yeah. I was doing their work for sort of probably five years. And then Josh invited me in to sort of look at the business with Mikey. So yeah, you know what a great place to be, and you know the brand's amazing. And you're you've bought it, and between the pair of you, you're now running it. Yeah, yeah. We we're obviously we'd moved to this site about yep. three years ago. Uh, could have done without the pandemic, but you know there you go. But uh, yeah, no, what an amazing brand. Mikey and I have sort of brought it on. Hopefully a little bit more. We've moved to a nicer premises now. Um, just looking for the future, really. What? You know, what's and next? so, specific to this car, because also, Mike's son works at Auto Farm as well, doesn't he? Yeah, Anthony. I mean, I think you race with Anthony yes. as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah. a great racer. Yeah, yeah. So Anthony. I mean, I knew Mike before Anthony because we yeah. used to race with each other. And then I got to know Anthony sort of back in 2004. I think it was 2005. And uh, yeah, he came on board about that time, and he he actually runs front of house, yeah. uh, runs all the service side. And so, specifics is we, we were chatting at an event, and I spoke to Mike, and we were chatting. Said, "Look, you know, we let's see if we'll sell the car." Yeah. So um, you've actually been servicing this car for a little while, haven't you? Yeah, since 2017, uh, we started looking after the car. Um, you know, it's a. I always say this is a great example of a, a nicely used car. It's in very good condition. You know, Mike. Mike sort of looks after it. So you've you've put this up on the ramp. Yep. You've gone through, done one of your reports on it. Yeah, we've done a, done a sort of a, a, our usual sort of detailed report. So we go through and we look for anything that's sort of pending, could, could be an issue. Uh, anything that's sort of an advisory that might need doing. Um, and based on that report, we've actually done some of the bits on okay. the car this time. But and so we'll, we'll, well. We'll, we'll give the, the buyer of this car the report yep, yep. They, they can look into so if they want to see it it's there it's 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 available for inspection yeah You're hiding nothing no no don't do that yep. we're always sort of pretty open book here yep. uh, you know if the customer wants to see it on the ramp and we can just discuss things you know on the report but the report actually reads very well there's yes. not that many things in fact off the report there's some bits like a grommet missing here and there we've we've done all those little yep. little jobs uh, and obviously we've replaced the tires because yes. they were just getting a bit agey yeah uh, but yeah, no, other than that, it, it's, it drives beautifully. Uh, it's well looked after. Yeah, really, really sort of pleased. And, and, the, and the actual 
uh, history pack is, is amazing as well. Lovely. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, we, we've, we've had a sort of chat with Mike on the car, and, and so I wanted to bring you in yeah. just to, to really speak a little about the actual kind of condition of it. Yeah. Um, and as I say, it, we, we'll have the, uh, the report as available. So if yep. you want to see the report, and assuming the car's still available when you see the video, because obviously the video will roll for, for some while after the car is sold. But um, so, uh, so yeah, it, it, it's there. I mean, for me, for me, we, we see a lot, a lot of cars, and th this is a good example of, of this model. You know, I've seen quite a few of these, uh, so you know, I've got no no qualms with this one. It's like it is what you, what you see. Yeah, is, it's definitely yeah, and, and I think it's yeah. you know we're not sort of selling this on the basis of it's kind of a museum piece and never driven. No, the car's no. been used. Yeah. but I think the nice thing about that is the next owner. One of the problems I see is we're coming across a lot of cars that have got kind of almost mm. zero or nearly zero miles and they're being bought by people who then don't drive them. Yeah. And I think one of the great things about this is, you know, as an investment, I, I haven't got a crystal ball. Do they go up, do they go, I've got no idea at all. There's not many of them. Exactly. It, it's, it's, a, yeah. it's a classic 911 model. Yeah. But you can drive it, you know, you can go out, use this car and not be afraid to, to have some fun in it. No, absolutely. You know, and this is the, what you just picked up on there is a lot of people, they buy these cars, they sit in garages. Um, I like to see a car as it should be yeah. now. So everything on this car, I mean, the, you know, everyone wants a perfect car nowadays. That's what I'm finding. That everyone's looking for a brand new car when they buy it. Well, the cars, it's not a, not well, a new well, car. The problem is though, if, if you, and you know, this isn't a, this isn't a horrible car. We're no, not talking not. about, no, you know, so, but I think if you kind of say, oh, well, hang on, there's a stone chip there or, the, yeah. you know, the danger is that you can never drive it because once you've yeah. made it perfect, Absolutely. You, you've got to, you know, wrap it up in cotton wool and bubble wrap. Yep. And, and, but cars are there to be driven. You know, the joy of this is getting in it, driving it, using it. Yep. And I think someone can, can do that yep. whilst it, you know, it's, it's eminently maintainable. Every part for this is available off the shelf. It is, yeah. yeah. Um, and so you know, there's, there's no risk of, oh, you can't get those anymore, or you can service them up and, and maintain them. No, this is, I mean, this is exactly what you just said. Yeah, this, this car, very easy to maintain. It's not that expensive, as long as you keep on top of the car, yes. which the car has had. And I think there's not many manufacturers that you can you know go back 30 years later and still get all the parts off the shelf and and you know whether it's an OEM supplier or whether it's Porsche themselves um, it always amazes me you know the obscure stuff you can still buy for these you go on the pet system and you order it and next day three days later this obscure part yeah, arrives. Yeah no I mean that's the thing you know I mean we've, we're seeing it more with the really old stuff now like the 70s cars yes. A lot of the stuff's being remanufactured somewhere else, or it's not as good as quality as it yeah. used to be. But with these, they're still at that sort of age. But even lots Porsche of themselves, they are going back to original manufacturers. And yes. I know some of the parts, yeah. there's a bit of work to be done on them. They're not quite, but you know, they are trying to to to, to uh, extend their range of products that are available, which I think is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like and you said, uh, you know, there's there's other manufacturers now you can buy stuff from, from uh, which is. As good quality. Yes. Yeah. Well, often it's the same manufacturer. Yeah. No, it is. It is. Part. It's just yeah, it's not just Boxster's doesn't come a, in. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think the fact that Porsche get involved as well. But you know, the long and short of it, someone can buy this, use it, not be afraid, have some fun in it. Yeah. Um, and and I think you know, it's a work of art that that can also be used and enjoyed, which is brilliant. Yeah, and I I, I like it. I mean, they oh, okay, they have gone up in price, but they're not like an RS, which they've gone yes. sort of eye watering price yes. now. It's still a, a good affordable car yes. and I, I think it's going to be a good investment because of the low numbers yeah yeah no I agree I, 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 I agree with you um, and, and obviously Mike you know I can see a tear in his eye when we're, we're talking about selling it I can see it, there's a yeah. sort of a he, he doesn't want to sell it but he's he's got two cars and he's just got had to make a choice it's really difficult yeah. I mean I, I'm you know we, we've chatted about this and, yeah. and you know I'm a car dealer but I'm a human yeah. being as well yeah um, and, and you know I do feel feel the pain uh, but hopefully, you know, we can make sure that yeah, it, it needs to go to a good home. And, home. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, well, thanks for for talking to us about the actual car. Lovely to yeah. see you again after all, all these right, years. Yeah, and uh, yeah, thank you very much. Yep. So there you go, a slightly different video to our normal format, and and you know, featuring a car that we're actually 
marketing and, and, and selling. Um, as always, you know, if you've got any really lovely Porsches that, that you're wanting to, to sell, do please get in touch with it. We are happy to buy outright uh, or as we're doing on this instance, you know, to sell on behalf of someone. Uh, and when we do sell on behalf, you know, we'll still stand to the car afterwards. And so, you know, we kind of make sure that uh, the car achieves its, its, its kind of full retail potential. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's, uh, as I say, an unusual video, um, but one that I hope you've found interesting, both from the, the car itself's point of view, uh, and also from Mike, I think he's an interesting uh, Porsche owner and, and sort of ambassador. I know he does a lot of work with the Porsche Owners Club uh, and does uh, talks at various events sort of throughout the year. So uh, so yeah, this is going on our Madeline Virgin website. Um, hope you've enjoyed it. We're in the summer, so you know, for goodness sake, get out, enjoy your cars uh, and uh, have some fun. In the meantime, stay safe, look after yourselves. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.